I, I don't know if you were in, I think you were for the earlier session with Tim Shovelin, mm. and he said he was, well, I'm paraphrasing, he said he was kind of optimistic that it might be possible to, to get a settlement. He said he sensed some kind of change in the atmosphere. Um, what, what's your perception you know, from, from the RMT's point of view? And can you el- elaborate on the role of the Secretary of State? Because the previous one and the current one, is their sign-off vital to securing any agreement? Well, I'm not sensing a massive change. Uh, you have to be optimistic in this game, otherwise, at both sides of the table, otherwise you'll never get, never get a deal. So we are working with them. Both sides understand fully what, what is needed. Uh, and at the moment, their recipe of change is not acceptable to my union. So we don't get on to money. Everybody's asking about money, what would you accept? In most of these negotiations, we don't discuss money at all because the, the menu they're putting in front of us is not acceptable to our members. And people ask, why didn't you put this or that to a referendum? If we'd put the last offer from Network Rail to a referendum, I suspect it would have gone down by eight to 10 to one. Our members are clearly not ready to accept what they're proposing. The changes in their lives that they're proposing are so dramatic that they will sink without trace if we put them to a referendum. So that's that. That's where we are. We'll keep working the problem with them, but they will have to back down, frankly, on some of the demands they're making to us. In terms of the Secretary of State, well, the previous one just kept abusing me and everybody else and calling me a baron and all this business and a militant. Uh, and I don't think the people that support us, the people who are out on our picket lines, are a bunch of militants. I think there are men and women who want a square deal off their employer. What it needs is a new atmosphere. They, they've cut the funding, they've cut it on London Transport as well, which is why we've got difficulties there. It's four, four billion in total. So we could settle these with a bit more funding. Uh, people don't want to hear that, but if, if you're cutting money, uh, you have to put up with the consequences, and we're hearing that all over the economy. But creating a different atmosphere is helpful. So I know that leading people, Sir Peter Hendy, um, the chief execs and various others have been to see the Secretary of State, which is good. I hope they get a new mandate. I think it's strange that Steve Montgomery isn't here today uh, answering questions as to what his role is in, as the chair of the RG, RDG and the person who's running Avanti directly. Why they've sent somebody who claims to know nothing about the disputes is beyond me because they could have got direct knowledge on that. So, I mean, to, it, be, to, to be fair, um, that would be my fault because we didn't, I didn't actually invite him in, in that oh, sense. Yeah. So um, we wanted to hear about Avanti's operations and network rails yeah, negotiations so he's I'll running the operations one, network of event at the moment so it it's helpful that there's a different mindset i suppose and a different approach and it's helpful that she's met us but we have to see something at the negotiating table that changes the formula the paradigm whatever the posh word is uh, that we're going to take forward uh, but at the moment we haven't seen it 